determination to leave the field, having only been out there two minutes, I'm not surprised. Um, one feels that Sod's law is such that in the event of Lancashire choosing to uh, declare, the rains would come in their absence. So they're clearly intent on attempting to gain some kind of score uh, with a view theoretically, and it's very theoretically, to bowl Somerset out twice in, uh, in five sessions. But with the wicket doing what it, as it is, it's... There's a significant amount of seam and swing movement as Philander's second ball of the day from the open union end is bowled. It's on a good length. It's played in defence um, by uh, Kerrigan, um, Simon Kerrigan, who's one not out. We've got um, Kyle Hogg on four. The partnership has realised eight. And uh, the 400 is up, so the maximum number of bat batting points have now been accrued. We have two slips. Gully, point. Extra cover, mid-off, mid-on, mid-wickets, fine leg, a very almost a sort of deep backwards square. Philander bowls the next delivery and it's played out in the gully and he's gone. Yep, that was off the back foot. It was fended off the body. I think it was Aral Sapir, a dive to his right, a fine two-handed catch to his right. Um, he went horizontally at ground level and it was fended and f um, off the body by Kerrigan, um, who uh, li did little more effectively than flash at the ball. He didn't go at any great pace, but it was no. a splendid dive nonetheless, and the Lancashire innings has come to a, c a conclusion. Their first innings has been completed at 14 minutes past one on the third day of the LB County Championship match at Taunton. So well, where does that leave things now? I mean, that's um, quite interestingly placed, I, I guess, is uh, in terms of what this match is actually going to achieve for Somerset. You're looking at... Uh, points really at this stage. There's not going to be a result in this game um, obviously because of um, time and also tomorrow's weather forecast is is pretty dreadful by all accounts. It's not, not looking good at all. So in fact it was, it was supposed to be a bit better today than it actually has been so who knows perhaps that, uh, that dreadful forecast will be proved incorrect tomorrow. Let's hope so anyway. But um, no, I think that Philander, once again, tremendous spell of bowling. He really has been the difference today and yesterday. Um, <clears throat> he is in, one, is in wonderful form, and he's acclimatised so quickly as well to these conditions. And he's just bowled magnificently again today, really, and uh, uh, g again, totally in the right spot, that channel of uncertainty outside the all stump, and uh, got a wicket there, caught, caught in the gully. So, yes... Uh, um, Somerset haven't taken long to wrap things up, so really from this stage, I guess um, Somerset will hope that they can just bat stoutly this afternoon, but you don't really um, envy them coming in in these conditions. It is dark, there's clouds over the Quantocks in the distance, um, it, the pitch itself is doing a bit, and um, it's going to be difficult batting out there, I presume. Um, it's not raining at the moment, the light's not too bad. But certainly I, I would say that um, Somerset are a little bit up against it, to put it lightly, at the moment. But we'll see how things develop. Let's hope that they can, can, can bat well, because Compton's in wonderful form, of course. Indeed he is, Ben, um, to the extent that he's now been um, procured for international duties. And um, he may not be with us come the Durham game at the end of May. So uh, without Marcus Trescothic, it would add uh, some significant stress to the... Um, the batting lineup. But the groundsmen are out there now, having spent most of the last three days, it seems, um, seeking to nurture and um, care for the wicket and the outfield in general. Um, but the, uh, they seem to be moving with a relative lack of alacrity, which suggests that the rain is not falling. It, it, the, the crowds seem to be a little higher than they were. There's a certain degree of brightness in the sky. Um, at every angle of the compass, and that's very encouraging. So Somerset will resume um, in the knowledge that uh, in our most recent game against Nottinghamshire at Trent Bridge, Harold Sapire, I was delighted, he made a, a splendid hundred. I mean, he very much is a, a first-class um, county cricketer of the sort, almost of the old-fashioned variety, someone who's prepared to bat for long periods of time without necessarily seeking to... Uh, um, to, to, to motor in, in, a, in a way that would suggest he's taking undue risk. Um, clearly Nick Compton obviously in the form of his life thus far. James Hildreth of course made a century and my word that was certainly overdue and let's hope it's symptomatic of a long term resurrection uh, in a career which has been for the most part exceedingly good 
which has had the occasional um, lull in, in the last year or two. So it's great to see James back in the hunt. <clears throat> Indeed. And, of course, Lancashire bowled out for exactly 400 for those tuning in. Um, th at the end of the day, 100 and 8.3 overs were bowled, um, and the score was exactly 400. Um, Philander took five for 71 in the end, 24.3 overs, eight maidens, five for 71, uh, with an economy rate, which I think tells you a lot about his strengths as a bowler. It was 2.89, so less than three and over. Though Trigo's, incidentally, was slightly better there with 2.37, so Trigo... Um, any assumption that he's expensive as a bowler um, has been quashed by this performance. He's bowled really well. 32 overs, 7 maidens, 2 for 76 for uh, Trago. Uh, Meshida, 13 overs, 1 maiden, 0 for 54. Went at about 4 and over. Overton, the youngster, Craig Overton, um, only 18, 19 years of age, very young. 14 overs, 1 maiden, 1 for 59. Again, 4 and over, 4.21 to be precise. Uh, Gregory, uh, five overs. Um, he went, went for nearly ten and over, but he did take a wicket, one for 49. And George Dockrell, 20 overs, two maidens, one for 75, with an economy rate of uh, about three and a half and over. Horton was um, out for two, um, more for 47. Uh, <clears throat> Horton was LBW bowled for Lander, of course. More LBW bowled Trigo for 47. Brown was LBW bowled Gregory for 50. Ashwell Prince fell short of his 100. He had a lovely 96, which I had the pleasure of commentating on on Thursday. And he was caught Compton, bowled Overton. Croft was caught Keyswetter bowled for Lander, 113. Um, and, uh, sorry, that was Croft. And Cross also was caught Keyswetter bowled for Lander for 21. Um, Proctor caught his wetter bowl trigger for one. Chapel caught Hildreth bowl Dockrell, the old campaigner there, Chapel, uh, for 20. Philander bowled Mahmood for three. And that left Hogg not out four. And the last wicket was Kerrigan, who was caught in the gully by Spire, bowled by Philander for one. So that's exactly 400. And we await the Somerset openers. Of course, the sad news today that Trescothic, of course, is out for six weeks. It sounds like it could be a career-threatening injury, which is, is dreadful. And it's certainly, uh, whether Chris Gale is coming or not, it would have been fun seeing them both back together, of course, Julian. <laughs> it certainly would. And uh, ankle injuries are uh, notoriously fickle things because other than the fact that it's a, it's a recurrence of last year's injury, uh, he has to learn to walk on it and to then to manipulate it, manoeuvre it, run on it and so on. So... Um, and I imagine if it's a ligament issue, it's 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 a long-term thing. So, but clearly, uh, the top chaps are in charge of his uh, his medication, the specialists, and so on. So, um, but I think on the positive note, it does provide the Somerset side to think in terms of um, uh, something that uh, you know, in some ways, we've not done in recent years. I think outside the box regarding Marcus. You know, he. I think it's fair to say that had Marcus is not his enormous contribution last year not been extant, we would now have been. Um, um, struggling to stay up in the first division on the strength of last year's performance. So, but it's great this year that in the persons of Compton and uh, Hildreth to an extent and also uh, Arrow Supplier, we've got batsmen who have put their hands up and say, look, we're having to plan ahead now long term for the, for the future mm. um, because um, Marcus has been one of the most outstanding players in the world, let alone in the history of the club. Indeed. But he's Indeed. not going to last for all eternity now. Um, Glenn Chapel, I'm looking at here. Now, here's a remarkable man. Uh, how he and his great... Um, Sparring partner, recently retired, relatively recently, Digger Martin, Peter Martin. How those chaps, mm. Chapel particularly, never played a test match for England is something I simply can't fathom. He's well, of course, he, he very nearly played a one-day international. I remember it well, actually, because I remember thinking, oh, fantastic, at last England had picked him. I think this was a few years ago now, and it was against Ireland, and he picked up a freak injury on the day before the game. Uh, I think he hurt himself in practice. And um, just just shows you how what a fine line these things often are. Luck does play a role in life, I suppose. Talent can take you a long way, but you do need a bit of luck. And and Chapel really, there's, there's, it's pretty inexplicable that he, he didn't have an England career. Certainly, when you look at the likes of Flintoff and Bresnan and uh, the other all-rounders we played down the years, Ronnie Irani. Um, Dominic Cork, you look at Chapel and you think, well, he should be one of that long list since both of them. <laughs> couldn't agree with you more, Ben. I really couldn't. Anyway, he's about to uh, take up the uh, 
the forefront of the attack from the river end to bowl the first ball of the Somerset innings to the inform Arrol Supplier. Chaplet is passed on by Martin Saggers and it's left alone outside the off stump. A ball of recent reasonable length and it swung quite prodigiously having pitched and Arrol Supplier has nothing whatsoever to do with that. We have not unsurprisingly, given the nature of the conditions at the start of the innings, we have at least three slips. I'd have been inclined to have had four. Captains seem remarkably conservative these days. Three slips of gully, point, mid-off, mid-on. Uh, a man just in front of square on the leg side and a wide long leg, almost a deep backward square leg, all with hands in pockets for the most part, bar the slips now as Chapel bowls. And it's played in defence by Sapphire off the front foot, allowing the ball to come onto the bat. Played with soft hands only as far as the man... Uh, in the direction of mid-off, but nothing like as far as that. Mm. Indeed, in the end synopsis, just going back to Chapel, he did actually play one match. It was against Ireland, but it must have been. I'm sure he was he was, he, he was injured in in one of those games, and he scored 14, and that was that was his only look-in in the end, which is a great shame. Only one one-day international. As Chapel resumes again, bowling the next delivery, and it's left alone outside the stump. It's taken. Um, by Cross and there is no run scored. I've noticed Paul Horton there at first slip, hands in pockets, j jigging around from side to side. It was, um, despite the fact it was against Somerset, um, one has to say that uh, when the, the current opposition lifted the, the trophy and the pennant was raised here mm. on Thursday, September the 15th last year, I had a chance to interview um, Horton and uh, Croft uh, and uh, clearly they were absolutely delighted as Chapel bowls the next delivery and it's played into fence off the back foot with soft hands picked up by the bowler himself and there is no run scored and um, yes it was sad that Somerset had lost the final game of the summer sad that uh, mm. it, it was a summer of, of, of considerable disappointment but uh, Oh, I should say a summer of so near so far, but it was lovely seeing a trophy um, on display here at the ground, and Lancashire, of course, hadn't won it since 1934, so it was still a very significant and historic occasion, as um, testified by uh, the coverage on all the newspapers the next day, as Chapel's next delivery is outside the Ostump, only just outside the Ostump, and Sapphire watches it very closely uh, and has nothing to do with the ball that could theoretically have um, come back at him. He didn't miss the, the, the Ostump by a great deal, mm. but uh, he acknowledges the... Um, the eminence of the delivery, and it goes through to Cross, who himself is now jigging up and down, mid-off fielder, Sajid Mahmood, going into a series of strange gyrations. Mm. Another man who uh, had his day for England, but is now, sadly, I think, uh, still a fine ball a bit past his peak as Chapel bowls, and that delivery again is this time on middle stump. It's just short of a length. It's played with assurance and assuredness by Arrol Sapphire, and it's picked up by Mahmood, who comes in from mid-on, and uh, there is no run. He's clearly uh, intent on... Um, on, on mm. featuring significantly for Lancashire this year. Mm. What do you think, Ben? Do you think Sajid Mahmoud still has an outside chance of getting back into international recognition? Well, you'd think, looking at a bowler who looks like about 7 foot, foot 10, doesn't he? He's one of those people that seems to go on forever. He's very, very, very tall. And uh, bringing it down from that traje trajectory is always um, a real bonus in a fast bowler. And, um, you know, it's difficult. England have got pretty full cupboards at the moment. I was talking to someone only last night about uh, Chris Jordan of Surrey who um, though he qualifies for the West Indies he doesn't seem to have had a, any interest from there which is surprising because he's a very good cricketer and certainly has his eye on England but you sort of look at England and, and the, the, the cupboard seems pretty full which is a lovely position to be in so I, I don't know if Mahmood will, will ever get a chance again because there's just Tremlett obviously in the wings and Finn, there's just so many so we've got Kyle Hogg resuming now, his first over of the innings, bowling to Lewis Gregory, who comes watchfully forward, plays with soft hands, only as far as the man at Shortish Mid-On, who picks up and there is no run scored. Uh, uh, a certain number of Somerset cricketers here, um, inevitably, in, in view of the rather chronic s injury situation mm -hmm. that's uh, mm -hmm. occurred regarding the, uh, the front-line bowling attack, I mean, uh, the players did a splendid job uh, the other day, um, but, of course, it, it has meant that the Somerset side have blooded a lot of youngsters simultaneously or so, it seems, as the next delivery from Kyle Hogg, tall, to and that's Ooh, the oh, the oh. No, no, I think it's just on the bounce, Ben. I think it was played with relatively soft hands, bounces in front of the man at third slip who juggles with it. I can't identify who it is from here. I think it could be Ashwell Prince. I think it is Ashwell Prince. I think Prince. it is, yeah, a very recognisable um, figure there. But uh, almost for a second it looked like a catch because we've got a slightly... Um, had one of the batsmen in the way there of our trajectory, and we couldn't quite see clearly there from my angle whether that was actually an edge or not. But like you say, I think it w was a bump ball. So Kyle, tall, thin, um, 
almost Bruce Reed like bows the next delivery to Gregory who cuts and shot cuts well that's a shot a of authority stroke. that was in front of square he had time to play the, sh the, 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 the stroke and you execute mm. it and dispatch the ball dismissively and I'm very pleased because he I mean one would never with all due respect have imagined uh, Lewis Gregory particularly at this juncture of his career uh, to have been deemed an opening batsman but that's a shot of real authority and um, perhaps he might um, in the longer term choose to lay down a marker and say look insofar as I've been given the opportunity to bat at the top of the order i.e. opening the batting I'm going to uh, to make it count for the long term in, in years to come too as Carl's next delivery is better delivery well in terms of length it's better but it's fractionally outside the legs not allowing uh, Gregory to glance it it wasn't the quickest delivery in the world it was mm. um, a leg by in actual fact but it was uh, mm. on the pads perhaps could have been dispatched but um, nonetheless it keeps the scoreboard ticking the Somerset mm. score now Ticking over to five without loss. Gregory's made four, the one leg by. We're in the second over of this third day of the LV County Championship mm -hmm. match against Lancashire here at Taunton. Mm -hmm. um, Lancashire themselves having been bowled out for 400 only uh, 10 or 15 minutes or so ago. Um, the declaration wasn't required. The final batting point from their perspective was and was duly um, mm. See, procured. So ready there, the batsman. Just so uh, we got Kyle mm. again um, running in from the Old Pavilion end. To bowl to Peter Trigger, so to bowl to Arrow Sapphire, rather, and it's wide outside the arch, very wide and going wide. It's still taken by a cross, and Sapphire chooses quite rightly to, uh, to ignore it and have nothing whatsoever to do with it. We've got three slips, a gully, point, uh, a widish mid off that Sergeant Mahmood with the ball in hand as I speak. Uh, Sergeant Mahmood, by the way, is, is only 30, so you'd assume he'd have a bit of time left. You would rather. We've got mid on uh, square leg, a man in front of square. Almost standing next to a Martin Sag is there and a long leg as Kyle's next delivery put to Sapphire. It's a good length delivery, but he acknowledges the away movement, which duly takes it away from the right-hander, and it's taken by a cross, and there is no run. Two overs gone in the Somerset innings. Uh, the Somerset score five without loss on a wicket. But well, the conditions are tailor-made, Ben, aren't they, for Seaman swing bowling? It is. I mean, it's perfect for Velanda. Um, Velanda, of course... Um, just the sort of bowl you want to come on when um, the clouds have gone, the clouds have come out rather and the sun's gone in and uh, it's that, that lovely kind of seeming um, situation which is a typical archetypal English kind of scenario. Fun funnily enough, I mean of course the West Indies arriving soon, I should think Darren Sammy might bowl well in these sorts of conditions being quite an un-West Indian type bowler, quite an English type bowler in a sense, kind of medium pace swinger of the ball. Anyway, we've got... Um, well, the next over just, just beginning to take place now. We've got um, three slips, a gully, a point, mid-off, mid-on, and Chapel. Runs in now, reaches the umpire, and he bowls outside the off-stump, and that's left alone uh, by Sapphire, and there's no run there. Um, just walks away towards square leg and has a little look at uh, things there and uh, look, surveys the field. Uh, that was Gregory, incidentally, that took that ball. The score at the moment, five for no wicket. After two overs, this being the third, of course, as uh, Gregory is, uh, it actually gets noticeably darker as I speak. Anyway, uh, Chapel bowls, and they're thinking of going for a quick single. The chap from point runs in to field, but uh, they think against it, rightly so. Um, almost a chance of a little mad mid-wicket scramble there by the two batsmen, but didn't quite take place, thank goodness. And uh, the Somerset spectators sigh with... Some sort of inward relief, no doubt, as Chapel takes the ball again and rubs it enthusiastically. The number three on his black back. Many, many years fine service for, for Lancashire down the years, of course, as he reaches the umpire and bowls a lovely length delivery, which doesn't hurry the batsman particularly, who plays it with some casualness up the pitch where it's fielded by Chapel off his own bowling. That was a nice forward defensive there, bat and pad close together, everything correct, but it is getting quite dark. At the moment, three slips in a gully, a point. Th there is a fine leg and a mid-wicket, mid-off, mid-on, who are fairly short. They're, not, they're uh, waiting for those miscued drives as that's outside the off-stump and, again, is left alone. Um, and there's no run again. So Chapel not uh, getting the full strokes that he would have hoped for thus far in this over. Um, <coughs> Chapel, of course... Um, an interesting cricketer, a county pro, as was uh, has always been the case with county cricket. There's those individuals that fondly live in the memory of those that watch them, even if they haven't been an international star. They've been a star in their own right. 
as Chapel reaches it. Oh, that almost bowled him. That came in, and it was left alone by the batsman, but it swung in the, in the air, as is the conditions at the moment. It was a nice looping in swinger, but it did go over middle stump and uh, was nicely kept there uh, by Croft. So that, that was a good delivery, actually, because really it was far too straight for the batsman to leave. Um, initially it was pitched, I don't know, less than a foot outside off stump, but it came in and almost went over middle stump. So that was a good in-swing, a good looping, swinging, swinging delivery there from Chapel. Quite a short run-up as he comes in now, and again, that's left alone by the batsman, but that one loops away in the air this time, and there's no run, and that's the end of the over, and all the fielders run in with enthusiasm as uh, the batsmen meet mid-pitch again and have a little chat about uh, the wicket and the way it's behaving and the conditions, no doubt. And uh, as I speak... In, over in the distance, the Quantocks uh, are a wonderful sight there, just over where the old cattle market used to be. It was there for a good thousand years, I believe, and uh, I think it uh, no longer takes place, which is a great pity uh, for those traditionalists out there. But uh, the Quantocks look, look lovely, but the cloud is quite low, and the ground itself fairly, not too badly, sort of sparse spectatorship, about a third full perhaps as the next delivery comes in from this end, and uh, that's driven nicely up to mid-off, but it's well fielded by um, Sajid Mahmood, and his trousers nearly fall down as he fields that rather well to his right, which could have been a rather embarrassing <laughs> moment. No one's pleased that didn't, didn't quite take place there. What m may have been a, a wonderful opportunity for any photographers in the ground, and there is one, actually, <laughs> at just, just where mid-on would be, and uh, he looks like he was just getting ready there to take a little snap. <laughs> as uh, the next delivery comes in, and that's outside the off-stump again, seeming away, and there's no run. Hogg, Kyle Hogg, bowling a nice line here again, and uh, yes, that was quite extraordinary, wasn't it? There, Very nearly. Um, he lost his trousers. Yes, yes, indeed. One almost felt one could actually say that, you know, we, could, we, we might perhaps have been reduced to saying that it's a freaker and it's masculine. <laughs> I bet it's seen the last of his cricket for today. And he's done it on a day which is even cold. Well, actually it is, but still. <laughs> well, the ghost of John R. that's just joined us. How wonderful. <laughs> We're honoured. Carl Hogg reaches the wicket again and bowls, and that's outside the off stump again. Moves away in the air, but not tempting the batsman's cut. And it's left alone, and there's no run. So, yes... Um, Quite interesting, Ben, isn't it? Because, mm. you know, whether Lewis Gregory put his hand up and said, look, I want to open the batting, or whether he was obliged, or whether he was cajoled, I mean, batting in these conditions on a day to day is not something that you imagine people queuing up to do, is it? Not really. I think you've got to be a brave man. Um, it, these really aren't batting-friendly conditions, but the Lancashire attack doesn't look too threatening at the moment, but Carl Hogg is bowling a good line, and he comes in and he bowls another good delivery outside the off stump, but it's not good enough to tempt the batsman who does the right thing and leaves it alone once again. But Philander, yes, I mean, he's class act, obviously, you know, one of those bowlers that you wonder, well, I was saying the other day, you know, he didn't get picked for South Africa till he was 27, and when you think he's made one of the best starts in, in history as a test bowler. However, starts don't always reflect a bowler's class. Malcolm Marshall actually started quite poorly and he ended up arguably one of the, if not the greatest, fast bowler of all time as Hogg reaches the umpire and bowls and that squares the batsman up and a big ooh and ah goes on at the slips as a result. He was kind of coming half forward and it skewed off uh, the m sort of middle outward half of the bat and Sajid Mahmood at mid-off now has the ball and is giving it a good rub once again. It may be, you know, that these flannels that we look at now that are covered in green marks may be a thing of the past soon. It's rather, rather like the Alec uh, Guinness book, The Man in the White Suit. I hear that a, a white material has been developed that uh, doesn't get dirty. So who knows, this could be a thing of the past as Hogg reaches the umpire and that's, oh, he beaten outside the off stump, good delivery tempted the batsman to cut it was really a nothing stroke a waft outside the off stump and it went through to the keeper but thankfully he didn't get that edge and a lot of ooh and ahs went on around from the fielders but thankfully um, the batsman is still there and Somerset five for no wicket yes well, strangely Ben it's, it's the you mentioned the issue of the, the flannels the uh, the new prototype um, experiment on whites who don't get it's only dirty just been but invented apparently this is just like in the film but clearly if, uh, if if Sergeant Mahmood's mm. most recent um, um, experience can be uh, referred to for a moment. He, uh, he, he, uh, they're clearly losing their elasticity, or uh, that's something that can't be allowed to happen, even in the event of trousers never getting dirty. <laughs> Chapel again bowls, and that's outside the off stump, and uh, again left alone. 
um, and uh, there's no run. Horton looks to have hurt his wrist. He's, Horton's at first slip. Eh? He's, 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 he's gesticulating and he's grimacing and he's flexing his wrist and he's holding it. And I know it's not a warm day, Ben, mm, um, mm. but it's you know I, I don't I have known colder days here. But looking at those yes. three slip fielders there, um, you think it was the Antarctic in um, you know sort of. October time, wouldn't yes, you? Yes, penguins stop playing, yes. Anyway, the next delivery well, squares the batsman up, um, but uh, they don't go for a shout for LBW. Um, I think he might have got a bit of bat on that. Went to play that away on the onside, uh, sort of on drive it away, but uh, didn't make real contact, and the ball bobbled off his, his pad out on the offside where it was fielded. Um, interesting delivery, that. That was obviously a good one, but no shout from the fielders or bowler. And uh, Sapaya gets ready again in good form after that knock last weekend, of course. Wonderful performance by the Somerset batsman that was, as, that, as he cuts, and he cuts hard and well, convincingly for four. It's Gregory. And it's Gregory, in fact, indeed, and it goes for four runs. Um, you could argue that perhaps that was an outside-ish edge, but I think that upper was cut, wasn't upper it, cut. Really? I think it was pretty well controlled. But I think he's taking mm. the view, Ben, not unnaturally, that, you know, there's no point in hanging around forever in a day without scoring runs if there is a ball out there with your name on it. I mean, you simply exactly. to, if the ball is short and wide, given the, the field is in and there's no one back on it, uh, mm. at any mm. angle of the compass but well, there's no gully is, is there a gully I think there's, there's a gully, gully yes there's there's no, there's one, gully. Uh, no one outside of the inner ring as it were so it's worth having a thrash and it's yes. and a good effect as well once, once, once again no third man which is um, often a, I don't believe there is a third man is there I can't see from this angle no. No, I think there isn't, there isn't. No, so Yes, you, you, I suppose you don't want to set the field for bad bowling but I suppose it was always a tradition to have a third man but uh, anyway Chapel comes in again and he bowls a slightly quicker one flatter delivery but that's nicely played out on the leg side and Gregory goes through for a quick single and uh, that was well run uh, but yes there's there's two slips and a uh, sorry three slips a gully a point mid off mid on and uh, there's a chap on the boundary there at square leg as well and a fine leg so no doubt there for any leg glances or anything of that nature chapel not Express pace, probably about 75, 78 miles an hour. Um, quite a short run as well, only about a third of the way back. And he's just starting to run in now. And he kicks his heels and runs and bowls, and that's outside the off stump. And that's played slightly late by Sapaya, who drops the bat on it. And it goes, dribbles out to the chap in the gully. And uh, there's no run again. We've got... Um, I think you'll find that's... Uh, Horton at first slip. We've got Stephen Croft. Yeah, Prince is at third slip there, expecting a... Quick catch, no doubt. More at uh, second slip. He played so well, of course, in Lancashire's innings. And uh, Sapaya waits again as Chapel reaches the umpire and he bowls. And that's nicely played forward. Forward nicely. Bat and pad close together. And uh, that is, I believe, the end of the over now. And from that over, we have gone on to ten for no wicket. Gregory on nine. Sapaya not, not out at the moment. There's been one leg by... And, um, yes, Moore got 47, was LBW bowled Trigo. And, of course, there was a, a wicket with the first ball after lunch on Thursday when I was on air, which was most exciting. But uh, today, not quite quite that way, uh, thankfully, if you're a Somerset supporter. But uh, the sun isn't threatening to come out, as it was for large parts of Thursday, which was a lovely surprise. It's usually my strength taking wickets with the mm. first ball of a session, Ben. But uh, Indeed. Um, here we are now with Carl Hogg. Uh, circles prior to embarking on his run. He looks like vulture-like, circling, <laughs> yes. you know, um, 360 degrees. This is his first delivery to Lewis Gregory. It's short outside the Austin, but it's sufficiently uh, wide for Gregory to, to, to simply ignore it. It goes through to cross, and um, the score remains at 10 without loss. The arrow supplier, of course, yet to uh, open his account, but that's not a bad thing. He's a man of um, mm. infinite mm. patience. He's a true um, county cricketer, really, a man who... who a very attractive touch cricketer, mm. uh, not renowned for any um, um, outlandish um, 2020 sort of stroke play, really. He is a, a classy, uh, almost a, a sort of oriental type of cricketer, really, as the next delivery is outside the Austin. It keeps a little low there as he's taken by cross. Many. But he's, uh, he's very supple-wristed, his supplier, mm. and... Um, mm. Um, it's from Malaysia, of course. He is indeed, yeah. yes. Yeah. And I, I didn't realise until recently that he has a brother who's played one first-class match. 
Um, right. I, I'm not quite sure for whom he played that game, but um, he was a good friend from Malaysia. Who he has a swam in the Olympics. First, oh, really? He mm. got a, as I say, his brother played one first-class game. I think he's a, a two or three years older, as I recall, but I, mm. I can't forgive me even recall his 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 name. So other than the fact that it, he, it, he's, 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 he's a supplier of his surname, but I don't know what his first name is. So Hogg it is, uh, and I'll the next delivery is good length Ooh. delivery. Oh my goodness me, Gregory attempts quite genuinely, I think, to. Uh, engineer a run to a ball that went a little further than short extra cover and he got I suppose almost halfway down the ground or halfway down the wicket and um, Arrow um, sent him back but did so in his usual gentlemanly manner there was no shrieking or shouting or um, and I can reliably averted. I can reliably inform you that uh, it was Rohan Sapire from Malaysia who played two first class matches two first class matches for Ma Ma Malaysia Yep. As uh, Hogg's next delivery to Lewis Gregory stands.